Good morning, Amazing Love. Today, we are going to continue in our series, Missing Peace. We're talking, talking about, about lacking control, control, missing control, not having control in our lives. And so often when it's like that, oh, it really robs us of our, of our peace. We're going to be in Colossians chapter 2, beginning at verse 9. So if you have a Bible with you this morning, uh, please, or, or the Bible app on your phone, feel free to open it up. Before I dive in this morning, I want to invite you to bow your heads with me and say a prayer asking for the Holy Spirit to guide us in this message. Dear Holy Spirit, we are so grateful for your word that you inspired. You inspired men like the Apostle Paul to write this letter to the Colossians, not only for their instruction, but for ours. And as we meet today, as we gather this morning to study your word, fill our hearts and minds, instruct us, and most importantly, Lord, draw us more closely to Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And we pray this in his name. Amen. Well, there goes my great record, almost two years of coronavirus pandemic, and I was doing great through it all until Thursday. And as I'm sure Pastor Dustin has already shared with you this morning, I got a positive diagnosis for coronavirus on Thursday evening. So unfortunately, I can't be with you in person this morning, but I still wanted to share this beautiful message about Jesus and how he is everything with you today. And it's, it's interesting that I got that diagnosis. I was even Thursday morning feeling great, uh, got back from Texas on a flight and decided I was going to take a short nap, and it was mid-afternoon waking up from that nap that I just sensed that something was a little off. So down to CVS I went to grab uh, a COVID test, and sure enough, it came back positive. Ugh. Now fortunately, my symptoms have not been bad at all. I feel very blessed. God's clearly taking care of me. But here's the intriguing thing I want to show you. I want to show you the cover of a book. The book that I checked out from the library several weeks ago to read. It's a book by uh, an author named Robin Cook. I don't know if you're familiar with Robin Cook. Uh, he tends to write these medical thrillers. And um, he, the books have titles like Viral, Outbreak, Contagion, Coma, Fever, very uplifting titles like that. And I happen to be right in the middle of reading this book called Viral. And it's interesting because Robin Cook was a physician. He's now 81 years old, still writing new books. This particular book actually uh, factors in the, the COVID pandemic into the story that's called Viral. And, and in this, what he always does, and, it's, and it's a, it's, they're called medical thrillers, they're almost a little bit medical horror stories because every book of his kind of illustrates this point, that when it comes to life, life can be horribly fragile. Life can easily be taken from us. And, and sometimes it might be something like a virus, sometimes it might be something uh, involving the medical care that we receive. But Robin's, Robin Cook's message is always, you are never really in control of things, not nearly as much as you might like to think that you are. And boy, is that, that's true in my life right now. I, I thought I was doing all the right things, but here, here I am with a positive COVID diagnosis. 
And it really, really hit home with me because of studying this text from Colossians chapter 2. In this text, Paul emphasizes that while we might have our insufficiencies, while we might not be fully in control of everything, we have a powerful God who is in control. We have a wonderful Savior who meets all our needs and fills all our insufficiencies for us. And so today, I think you're going to find, as I have this past week, in the midst of my di diagnosis, I think you're going to find that this is really a beautiful passage for times like this. And, and let's face it, even if there were no pandemic, it's Christmas time. And every year at this time, don't we all feel just a little bit overwhelmed? Don't we all just feel like, oh, I don't know if I can do one more Christmas party. I don't know if I can make one more Christmas shopping trip. I don't know if I can make it all the way to Christmas. Because this is that time of year where life just feels very out of control. But here comes Jesus. As Paul explains in the book of Colossians, and he is the one who is enough for all of us. I want to read this to you from Colossians chapter 2, and I'm going to begin reading at verse 9. For in Christ, all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. And in Christ, you have been brought to fullness. He is the head over every power and authority. In him, you were also circumcised with a circumcision not performed by human hands. Your whole self, ruled by the flesh, was put off when you were circumcised by Christ. Having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through your faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. He has taken it away, nailing it to the cross. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. So one of the things that in the Gunn family we always do during the holiday season when we're having our holiday gatherings, something that we did as recently as our Thanksgiving gathering up at my daughter's house in Appleton is we set up a special table wherever the family is gathering, and we bring out puzzles. And then we have to vote and decide which puzzle we're going to build during this family gathering, and it gets set out. It's usually a huge puzzle. And I don't know how you are about building puzzles, but our whole family spends the next couple days as we're gathered building these puzzles. And we're a little bit competitive about it. I don't know if any of you have ever done competitive puzzle building, but that's how we are in our family. Now, when you get toward the end, there's nothing more disappointing than to find out that you have some puzzle pieces missing. There's also sometimes a little bit of suspicion around missing puzzle pieces because being competitive means that sometimes one of the kids may have tucked that missing puzzle piece into their pocket so they can be the last one <laughs> to put that puzzle piece down and in their mind win the puzzle. I, I thought about this as I was reading what Paul says here, because he talks about the fact that we all feel at times like we're missing pieces of our lives, that there's something insufficient about us. Maybe it's 
messaging that we're getting from friends. We were the last one picked for the basketball team. Maybe it's messages we got from our, our parents. Maybe it's our own siblings, brothers and sisters, making us feel less than. Paul somehow knew that feeling. And he wanted the people in Colossae to know wherever they were feeling insufficient, not enough, they had someone to make them enough. Part of the reason the Colossians were beginning to feel that they were not enough was that there was a group of people who came into this congregation with some thought viruses, some idea viruses that they brought to the Colossians. And they were saying, not only were the Colossians not enough, but even Jesus was not enough. And so Paul, hearing this, knew that he had to battle back and let the people of Colossae knew that through Christ they were enough. Listen to how Paul puts it. For in Christ, all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. Christ is enough, Paul starts out, because he is true God in the flesh, true man and true God in one person. And then he goes on and he says, because Christ is enough, being the Son of God, being true God and true man at the same time, when we cling to Jesus through faith, when we hold on to Jesus, we are enough because he brings his sufficiency to us. And in Christ, you have been brought to fullness. He is the head over every power and authority. Here's what I want you to write down at the very top of your notes. Paul's telling us that Jesus Christ is always the missing piece in our puzzle. Wherever we feel insufficient, whenever we feel not enough, Jesus provides himself to be that sufficiency, that fullness. And as the son of God, he can be enough for all of us because he's not just a human, he's also divine. In Christ, you have been brought to fullness. I don't know what messaging that you've received in the past about the deficits you might have or the insufficiencies you might ha have or people who've told you, you, you're just not enough. Paul wants us to hear loud and clear, you are enough. You are enough in Christ who came to give you his fullness, and he is the head over every power and authority. Whatever, whatever voice might be rattling around in your head, a friend, a parent, another relative, a boss telling you you're not enough, Paul says you can ignore that voice. Do not let it rattle around in your head because Christ makes us enough. What, Think about what Paul said to the Corinthians, for example. He had experienced this feeling of not enough. He had experienced the feeling of being weak. But then in 2 Corinthians 12, he says, I rejoice in this. I rejoice. I delight in my weaknesses. I delight when people insult me. Because God's grace is sufficient for me. He fills all my needs. That's how Paul wants us to feel. That's where Paul wants us to look, to be able to say, I delight in my weaknesses, in my insufficiencies, because when I am weak, then I am strong in God's strength. Are you feeling life is spinning out of control because of some weakness or inefficiency, or insufficiency in yourself? Step back. 
and be reminded by this beautiful gospel truth that as Paul says, in Christ, all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form and in Christ, you have been brought to fullness. You are enough. Here's what you can write down. Jesus puts me in control of my insufficiencies. Whenever we feel like life might be spinning out of control, go to Jesus and let him remind you when you are weak, when you are not sufficient, he is strong and his fullness is sufficient for you. Now Paul goes on. And in verse 11, he writes this. In him, you were also circumcised with a circumcision not performed by human hands. Your whole self, ruled by the flesh, was put off when you were circumcised by Christ, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through your faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. Paul just lays it all out here. He knows, and, and you and I know, that as we're born into this world, we're born sinful. And even the desire to do good things does not naturally exist in us. We don't naturally want to do the things that please God because of our sin and our sinful flesh. But Paul comes along and he says, that too is something that Christ has addressed. Now look around. You're going to see that sin is everywhere, including inside yourself. I'll go back to the book that I mentioned a little bit earlier, that book by Robin Cook called Viral. What makes all the drama happen in that book? What makes the book a page turner? Well. It's true of all great authors that they know how to tell a fiction story that when it comes to the human condition is not really all that fictional. It's a story, this book viral, of human greed, of human pride. And th these are the things that create all the drama and, and, and all the storyline and, and when you read this book, you find yourself nodding your head. Could that happen? And the answer is, yeah, it could happen because sin is in our human condition. Paul writes about that, and he says, you were also circumcised with a circumcision not performed by human hands. We need to get rid of that sin that we're born with. Our, our sinful flesh that influences our spirit and our soul to do things that are against God needs to be cut away. Circumcision was this Old Testament ceremony that was used to be a symbol of the fact that the old way of life is gone and the new way of life as a child of God and the children of Israel was, was there for the people provided by God. Notice Paul goes on and he says, your whole self, ruled by the flesh, ruled by that sin nature in you, was put off when you were circumcised by Christ. And then he tells us what that circumcision by Christ was. Having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through your faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. Paul says, you were, you were brought to God through baptism. And that, that baptism is not merely a symbol. That plain water combined with God's words and promises makes a fundamental change in our natures, in our human condition. And Paul says, you're, you're no longer ruled by your sin, by your flesh, as he calls it. That was put off. 
You're actually living a new life just as Jesus died and rose again. You were buried with Christ in your baptism and raised again through your faith in the working of God to live a whole new life. Imagine this. If you go through life feeling like you, you just lack any amount of self-control, that your, your sin nature has, has got you around the neck and is tugging and pulling you back and forth, and, and you want to escape sin, but you, you just feel powerless in the face of this sin, Paul says, you are no longer powerless because of Christ his death and resurrection, because of your baptism, you have been brought into a new life. You're, you're not out of control anymore because of your sinful flesh. You have been given the ability to make choices, to do, to say, to feel the things that please God. What an amazing change. Because I think we've all gone through those times in life where we feel like sin is in control of us. We're not in control of it. Where we feel dragged down and drowned by our lack of self-control. Here's what I want you to write down because this is what Paul is really saying to us this morning. <laughs> that control of ourselves that we sometimes feel we've lost, there's hope. There's strength. There's possibilities to do the things that please God and give glory to him and also make our world a far better place because we're beacons of love, doing the things that God wants us to do, following the calling that God has put on our hearts and in our, on our minds. Through your faith in the working of God, Paul says, You've been raised from the dead. And that means Jesus, you can fill this in, gives me back control of myself. Paul sometimes talk, talks about sin as debts. And, and that's not new language to us. One of the old versions of the Lord's Prayer is forgive us our debts as we forgive those who are indebted to us. When we think about sin as debt, oof, it's a mountain of debt that we have before God. Have you ever been in a position in your life where you were buried under some debt. Maybe you stretched yourself too far to get that mortgage. And we all remember 2008. Maybe little by little you racked up the credit cards a bit too much. I can tell you quite honestly, Julie and I went through a period like that when we got back from Africa. And we had a bunch of stuff to buy to just fill the house. We needed to get a car. Um, all things that were just day-to-day -day things, but we didn't have them. And then we had our children in Christian schools, which absolutely love. No regrets there whatsoever, but there was tuition to pay. And then there's just the basic expenses of putting food on the table, keeping the lights on. And it didn't seem like anything big for a long, long time. And then one day, we realized we were over $50,000 in credit card debt. <laughs> what a wake-up call. And we didn't know what to do. We didn't know how to get ourselves out from underneath that mountain of debt. 
Finally, someone introduced us to Financial Peace University, to Dave Ramsey. You know, we went to the course and we studied it. And we began to implement some of the things and slowly but surely, the debt began to peel away. Thank goodness for a guy like Dave Ramsey and how he taught us how to manage our money and do it in a better way. Paul talks about a Dave Ramsey for our soul. And, and a completely different kind of Dave Ramsey. Dave Ramsey teaches you how to get yourself out of trouble. This quote-unquote Dave Ramsey, he takes care of it for you. He gets you out of trouble, and he does it completely for you. Paul says, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. He has taken it away, nailing it to the cross. Here's what Paul is saying. Fill it in next to Roman numeral three there. Jesus puts us back in control of our spiritual debts. There's nothing that makes life feel more out of control, more burdensome, more difficult than a dark history, than a, than a past that, that weighs us down, that feels like we've got four backpacks all at once of guilt and shame, of, of hurting others, of, of doing things that were self-destructive, and so often people, when they look back on a personal history like that, they feel like there's no escape for me. My past defines who I am. My past tells me how far I can go in life and how difficult and hard that is when a person feels like there's no way to, to gain escape velocity from a past that is filled with guilt and shame. And that's what makes Paul's message to the Colossians so wonderful. Because he says, there is a way that's been given to you to escape your past, to not have it define you, to take you into a new future, a better future. And that way is that Jesus Christ made you alive by forgiving you all your sins. He canceled your debts. He doesn't come like a Dave Ramsey and say, follow my path and I'll show you how to get your own debts canceled. No, he himself does everything needed by going to the cross, before going to the cross, living a perfect life for you. And then to demonstrate clearly that all your debts, all your sins have been paid for, he rises from the grave on that beautiful Easter morning to declare victory. Victory over your debts, over your sins, over your guilt and shame. And that means your past can be dispensed with and you can be on a brand new path. God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. I love that because it reminds me of Romans 8.1. And I hope you walk out of here today Knowing this is true for you, Romans 8.1 says, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And that means you. Here's what you can write down. I'm no longer a slave to sin. Or if you want to write, I'm no longer a slave to my past. Jesus gives me back my life, my possibilities they're limitless because I'm unburdened of my sins and my destiny in heaven is sealed because of all that Jesus has done. All of a sudden, 
there are going to come things in your life too that are going to make life feel out of control. Maybe it's going to be this Christmas season you're going to look around and say to someone that you love, I just feel like everything is spinning out of control this Christmas. Maybe, like me, you contract uh, a health challenge and you're going to feel like, I, how? What did I do? <laughs> what didn't I do? All these things to, to make you feel like, do I have any control over life at all? Doesn't look like it. But the beauty in all this, Paul tells us, is that those are the moments when we can look at this amazing, all-powerful Savior, full of the, of the fullness of God's power. Look to him to be your sufficiency, to be your enough. Look to him to help you control yourself in such a way that you're doing the things that please God, not the things that burden you again with guilt and shame. Look to Jesus because he is the one who has canceled all your debts, all your sins, and gives you a new life now and an eternal life in the future. What an amazing Savior. And Paul's message is very clear. It's all about Jesus. Jesus plus nothing else equals everything for us. You know, those angels, when they sang, when Jesus was born, remember what words they sang? Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. That's what we say this morning too. Glory to God in the highest. It's him. It's all Jesus. He's done it all for us. And in him, we are enough. We are sufficient. Amen.